This video is sponsored by Arzen. That's right, I'm sponsored now. Daddy's gotta eat. Jacob Ross, film guy here. Movies are some of the most fun things to talk about in my opinion, because so many people have many different opinions on different films. And I find so much enjoyment in sharing with everyone that I know just what kind of films I've been seeing recently and how I felt about them. It's why on YouTube, I share my opinions on so many different film topics I'm interested in. Which leads me to what I'm here to discuss today. Movie reviewing sites. Whether it's Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, or Letterboxd, these all serve the same purpose. <coughs> Follow me on Letterboxd. <coughs> it's interesting because there are certain reviewing websites that I trust the scores on, and some where I don't. The one I'm most against being Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes launched on August 12th, 1998, just eight years after IMDb. Both of these have been around for a long time, but Rotten Tomatoes has always, in my eyes, been my least favorite. Most of film marketing likes to show off their scores from Rotten Tomatoes, whether it's on their posters, TV spots, um, sometimes you'll see it on Blu-rays, and just about everywhere, honestly. It's arguably the most popular, and some online often argue whether it's even a reliable source for reviewing movies. Personally for me, and this goes with all movie reviewing, I don't take what I see as a fact. There have been so many movies that were certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes that I don't like. Smile, 79% Bird Box, y'all remember this shit? 64% Mithrigan, 93% are we serious? Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? The Black Phone? 82%? On the opposite side, there's also films rated rotten that I actually enjoy, like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas has a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the whole Saw franchise. The Saw franchise is all completely rotten, except for the most recent one, which is baffling to me. But all of this is about personal preference. But as far as all the movie reviewing sites go, I feel like Rotten Tomatoes has had by far the most inconsistent scoring. To make this even more interesting, in February 2016, Rotten Tomatoes was acquired by Fandango. If you're not familiar, Fandango is a website that sells movie tickets for you know, bigger movie theater chains. But right after Fandango bought Rotten Tomatoes, they began posting the tomato meter scores for these films right next to the buy ticket option. Since then, studio executives have started to think that Rotten Tomatoes matters more than it used to. And in some cases, they've altered their strategies for marketing entirely. It's easy to see why people assume Rotten Tomatoes is tightly linked with ticket sales, with potential audiences more likely to buy a ticket for a film with a higher score, and by giving critics more power to persuade the box office. However, the correlation between Rotten Tomatoes scores, critical opinions, marketing tactics, and box office returns is really complicated. It's not a simple cause and effect situation. For those unfamiliar, Rotten Tomatoes assigns each review as either positive, fresh, or negative. Rotten. Then calculates a percentage score based on the ratio between positive and the total amount of reviews. This means that if a movie had 100 reviews and only 20 of them were positive, that the film would have a score of 20%. However, such scores can be misleading because they don't accurately depict the quality of the film. For instance, a 97% score on a film could imply that most of the critics gave a positive review, but they might have not considered it exceptional. This setup of how they do their scoring could lead to some skewed perceptions of a film's quality because of the tomato meter score. So while Bird Box got a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's likely that all the reviews on average were about 60%, with a portion of reviews being much lower than that, averaging out to about 64%. Rotten Tomatoes considers any score to be above 60% fresh. I don't know about you, but to me, a 60% represents a grade D. Yet if 10 critics all gave a film a 60%, or maybe even lower, that film could wind up being 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you understand why I don't trust them that much? <sighs> wow, okay, Rotten Tomatoes. That was a lot. All right, let's start talking a little more positive now, okay? Letterboxd. I'm gonna sound like 
such a fucking nerd in saying all of this. I've been on the app since 2018 and I've probably checked it every day since joining. I've convinced my entire friend group to join. I've stalked all of their accounts. I like to know what they watch. I like to make my stupid little lists at three in the morning. But most importantly, I've discovered so much great cinema through it. Before signing up, I was really into cinema, but I didn't know who Tarkovsky was. I was only kind of familiar with Akira Kurosawa's films. Through this app, through the top 250, through reviews and ratings, over the years I've managed to fall more in love with cinema than I was five years ago. Without it, I wouldn't have discovered great films like Fantastic Planet, House, Come and See, La Ain, High and Low, Daisies, Eight and a Half, and I could go on for hours. Letterboxd feels like a community, a home for movie nerds like myself. To be able to share our stupid one sentence reviews or to write a three paragraph review about a film we gave a half star just for it to get three likes is it's kind of beautiful in a way. Basically what I'm trying to say is, is that through Letterboxd, I discovered a whole side of cinema that I didn't even know was there. It exposed me to so many films that I consider my favorites now. And I wish I discovered them decades ago. Letterboxd has managed to change the way that I watch movies. Just like Arzen's brand new Boom 3 projector. As a film buff, I enjoy watching films in the biggest, cleanest, and loudest format possible. And with Arzen's new all-in-one Boom 3 projector, I get exactly that and more. Arzen was kind enough to send me their newest gold colored version that looks so good. Packed in with the 36 watt speakers, these speakers are crisp and clean. And if I'm feeling it, I can crank these speakers and it sounds just like I'm sitting in a movie theater with all that fantastic 3D Dolby audio. The crisp highs, the strong mid ranges, and booming bass all sound fantastic. It's packed with six sound units for a more natural and immersive audio experience that sounds amazing for playing your favorite games, listening to music, or watching some good cinema. The Boom 3 has made movie nights so much better. Even more, the Boom 3 comes with many smart TV features with access to my favorite platforms with just a click of a button. Each app works flawlessly and makes throwing on my favorite TV shows easier than ever. The Boom 3 also has features like autofocus and auto keystone, which have been so incredibly useful. My setup isn't anything crazy, but with this projector, I could angle it at just about anywhere in my room and still have a perfectly flat and crisp image. There's even a zoom function where you can go from 50% to 100%, which means you can place this projector on basically any wall in your house and it will always fit. After testing out the Boom 3 projector for a few days now, already my old projector is sitting in the trash. The video quality is incredible, it's super bright and has a colorful HDR10 display for improved clarity, contrast, and color reproduction. Even with its native 1080p quality, it still comes built in with 4K support, which just looks amazing. I've tested out many projectors and Arzen's is by far the best I've ever used. It will definitely remain plugged in for whenever I want to get the perfect home theater experience. Check out Arzen's brand new Boom 3 projector. Arzen has also released some new accessories on their Amazon page, so go check that out too. The link is in the description below and thank you Arzen for sponsoring this video. Okay. As I was saying, Letterboxd has managed to change the way that I watch movies for the better. I always looked at movies critically, but being able to apply a score to a film out of five makes you really think about what you actually liked and disliked about a movie. And if you're one of those people who give everything a 5 out of 5 or a 10 out of 10, good for you because you're probably happier with your life than I am. Every time I watch a film, I always take mental notes about the good and bad aspects of the film that always morph into the final score I give on a film. Everyone has a different way they review movies, which is why I love Letterboxd so much. Sure, you have your collective scores on each film, but being able to follow individual people and get different perspectives all for the same film all on the same app is truly incredible. In my opinion, there's nothing more fun than seeing what kind of films my friends have been watching and what they've thought of them. Being able to create lists, write reviews, add tags, and forming a gigantic backlog of movies on a watch list that I'll probably never get around to seeing because I resort to watching the same movies over and over and over and over. What more could you ask for? Throughout this video, it might seem like I threw a lot of shade towards Rotten Tomatoes and a lot of praise towards Letterboxd, but in reality, 
all these websites have flaws, but also a lot of great things about them too. Because of Rotten Tomatoes, people have gone out of their way to go see a film they normally wouldn't see because of its high score on Rotten Tomatoes. Letterboxd changed the way people watch movies and the way they think about them critically. Whether you use all of these reviewing sites or just one, you might agree that ever since you signed up for them, your thinking about cinema has shifted in a way. Maybe you love it even more now. That's how it went for me. So yeah, movie reviewing sites. I mean, do you personally use any of them? Please let me know in the comments. I like to hear from all the different perspectives from everyone, so. Oh yeah, and thank you so much for 7,000 subscribers. It's really cool to see that people actually watch the content that I like to make. So thank you. Thank you all once again, and I will talk to you later. See ya.